Good afternoon and welcome to Valley Spotlight. For those of you celebrating Easter today, happy Easter to you. Easter has changed an awful lot since I was a kid. We used to be just excited about a basket with some jelly beans in it and maybe some baseball cards and we were thrilled. And now, I don't know, I'm buying my kid virtual basketball cards and maybe a baseball mitt. I don't know. Things are just different now, aren't they? And things are a little different with the show today. Uh, Lauren, remember last week I was on vacation and taking some time off. Lauren is doing the same this week. So you're stuck with me for the afternoon, but we really appreciate you tuning in, especially if you're celebrating the holiday with your loved ones. We really love it when people tune into Valley Spotlight. All right, let's get started. Uh, first story, thank you, uh, Steel Light. It's a perfectly plated story. Um, if you're from East Liverpool, you know. If you're not, you probably don't know about Renovatios, a brand new restaurant in downtown East Liverpool. Yeah, that's right. They're renovating the entire area and it has a really cool story behind it. to the newest thing going in downtown East Liverpool. It's Renovatios. It's actually Latin for rebirth. We want to be the rebirth of this building and the rebirth to East Liverpool. And co-owner Randy Schneider says, you can't look forward if you ignore the past. His business partner bought this bank and that brought into focus Randy's vision. This was the Potter's National Bank and this was like the People's Bank for over hundreds of years. I mean, you had East Liverpool known as, you know, the pottery capital of the United States, and this is the bank that all the potteries use. That was the easy part. The hard part was how to make it real. It's like, how do you put a, something cool in here and you come up with this idea for a restaurant, and it's just a unique building on the inside, the architecture and the columns and beams, that it's like, well, it, it could either A, be a bank, or B, be something really awesome like a restaurant that you can sit and enjoy the beauty of the art and architecture in it. You can tell it's a bank, with an historic old boardroom on the second floor, where many of the town's big decisions were made, all the way down to the vault that you can walk right into. Oh yeah, safety deposit box and the wide open vault with the lights in it. I mean, you'll see people sitting there next all day getting pictures in front of it, their families and uh, birthday parties and things like that. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah. And in the middle, this giant bar that fills a couple of needs. It was really the focal, focal point of the room. It's this big empty space in the middle, and we put all these chairs and tables everywhere, but it didn't really make a whole lot of sense to leave it open, so centering it with the bar of local craft beers and wines made perfect sense. The beers and wines may whet your appetite, but wait until you try the food. They have a wood fire pizza oven in the restaurant that uses a different kind of dough that you'd normally see in a bank. Wood fire pizzas are definitely something we're known for you. It's not something you typically see around this area. Uh, so people are very fond of the wood fire pizzas. And the people are coming in, loving the menu, from the strip steak to the giant burgers and the mouth-watering appetizers. When you're done and you just want to chill out, check out this patio complete with fire pits for the cool nighttime air and a deck where you can see the Ohio River in the distance. People are so humble and coming in here all the time and being so nice. And it's just so nice to see a good report in the community and even the surrounding areas have been coming in here left and right. Initially, my business partner and co-owner Craig Cousins pro bike and run bicycle shops and he actually owned this building when I met him. And I asked him, why'd you buy this building? And he bought six PNC banks and this was one of them. And he said, it's just too cool of a building to pass up on. And he actually is from Pittsburgh. He's a major Pittsburgh business developer. And he took a chance on East Liverpool partnering with me. And it's been nothing but success since we've opened. Their motto, buy and serve local. The furniture on the patio is actually old milk jugs from the local recycle plant. And the plates, well, you know where they're from, home of the best china in the country. Steely actually sells um, Paul China pottery that is from East Liverpool that we're in. And so a lot of dishes you'll see out there are Homer Lachlan and they're from Hall China. And people are like, you know, East Liverpool is a plate flipper area. People are like, what do you mean a plate flipper? So you know, if you see people flipping a plate, they're looking to see if it was made locally. And that's kind of like a little thing that if you're from this area, you know what they're doing. But when you're not, you're like, why is this person flipping this plate? So Steel Light definitely takes care of us uh, with the Hall China line, uh, the Foundry line. It's awesome to have here, supporting local. We're really excited about it. Randy and the people here think this rebirth or renovatio is just starting. And he says there's even more to come. Absolutely. Uh, I can't say what, but we have a surprise for East Liverpool with some other buildings in town that we're working on right now. And uh, stay tuned because that's going to be uh, the rebirth of the start of the beginning.
Well, if you're heading to Renovatios, please do. I had the strip steak. I had a little bit of pizza. I tried the salad. I wanted to try everything, and because I'm a glutton anyhow, it worked out very well for me. Renovatios Tap Room and Restaurant located in an old bank, an old potter's bank, right in the heart of downtown East Liverpool. All right, speaking of eating and trying new things, I am not a huge fan of Greek food, unless it's a gyro, gyro, but these guys are going to change my mind. We'll be back with uh, Pesto's Test Kitchen after this. Welcome back to Valley Spotlight. We're at the Trumbull County Tourism Bureau and they have their new magazine out. If you see this around, make sure you pick it up because there are so many cool things to do in Trumbull County. The official visitor's guide is brand new for this spring. All right, Greek Easter. We celebrated it last year and if you Greek Easter people are getting ready to celebrate yours, you're gonna love this segment. Uh, we got some really authentic people to do some authentic Greek food. Hope you enjoy it. kitchen with some special guests this Absolutely, week, right man. Mark? Some lifelong friends. Introduce our lifelong friends. Oh, well, we got Ken Hyderis uh -huh. from the Sunrise Inn, him and his family. Mm -hmm. uh, the Hyderis has been in Warren, Ohio since forever. Rover was we got above. Nikki uh, Frankos uh, uh, here from the Buena Vista, uh, famous Buena Vista. Uh, what's your motto? If the colonel had a recipe, he'd been a general. That's Absolutely. Right. That's so right. some, some lifelong friends. And and you used to the work only there. two Greeks of pesto knows. That's why we're here. You don't want anybody else. He used to work there, right? I used to work with him. I worked he, with he Kenny. He transformed before. our restaurant. That's, oh, that's all I'm going to say exciting. because we're keeping it short, right? <laughs> I understand. I understand. <laughs> we got so a timer on. We're going to do some Greek Easter. <laughs> we're going to do, you food. know, I grew up with my, you know, my, my uncle married into a Greek family. My Aunt Sandy, who I treasure to this day, and Yaya, her mom. And, uh, you know, I learned a lot about Greek food and, and the passion for the flavor and everything just like Italian just like Mexican everybody's got that passion about food and you know I, I carry it on to this day you know grape leaves Mm -hmm. Best midnight snack you'll ever have. Is cold, that right? Cold right out of the refrigerator. A little lemon. A little lemon. yogurt sometimes. Uh -huh. You do yeah. with the yogurt? Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to give it a go. And if we don't do it right, these two guys are going to... I think they're going to know. I think they're, they're right? going yeah. to know. But, all right. <laughs> very good. What are we making today? We, I, you told us about the grapes. Two of the classics. Pasticcio and we're making uh, domates. Okay. So pasticcio is Greek lasagna, okay. as we know it. And then uh, domates are grape leaves. You know, and you see grape leaves in a lot of different places, especially the Greek festival. Some Greek restaurants offer them. Some non-Greek restaurants offer them. So two of my favorites. I, I don't like cabbage rolls, but Greek style. Yeah, exactly. Right. exactly. <laughs> a lot smaller. A lot Has smaller. anyone ever rolled a grape leaf before? Sure. Millions. No. Okay, not yes. me. Not you. <laughs> my, you mother too, right? my mother does them all the We're time. We're going to do them today. Though, right? I, think they I wish my mom them. was here. I wish they have a machine that you can actually buy. Really? Like a sushi roller, but it's a grape leaf roller. All right. I haven't seen it before. All right, let's turn around, guys. You ready to cook? Yeah, let's get some a couple So we're going to start with the rice. Kenny's going to start with the rice. We have a nice... Uh, heavy cast skillet right here and you're gonna start with the onions and go ahead and throw those onions in and you're gonna start with the meat sauce the Greek meat sauce mm -hmm. for the pasticcio so if you want to throw them in there onions. and as always we always want to hear that sound that sizzle listen to that sizzle and folks. that's what we want to hear <laughs> so that and then Kenny hit that Nikki hit that with a pinch of salt because the salt draws out all the moisture in the onions okay so you're working on that, and you know, a, a lot of the key flavors comes from a lot of different herbs. So you have mint, you have dill, you have flat leaf parsley, and scallion. So Kenny, why don't you go ahead and drop all those in? My mom has mint in the backyard. Well, it can take over your house. Oh, I know. It, it can grows. definitely take over your it house. Grows. So my, when I grew up on Parkwood Stewart Circle, we had mint. We brought it home from my grandma Rosano's house, and we had mint completely surround the house. And when so you have a bad on. stomach, you get the mint and you chew on it, and it fixes your stomach. Perfect, perfect. Go ahead and add the rest of those. You want to go ahead and 
and so we have a combination over here for the Greek meat sauce of ground lamb and ground beef. Oh, so if you good. want to dump that's that in right that there. That smells good. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be great. Oh, yeah, just the garlic in a little first? Yeah, you can put some garlic in first, garlic absolutely. First. Keep the garlic I, like to, I don't know how you like the garlic. I like the slivered garlic. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I'd like to put it all with the onions. I think it yeah. gives a little bit more. Yeah, you get all those aromatic smells. You saw good fellas when he sliced it real well. We're not doing it that fine okay, like Polly. fine, okay. I mean, Polly did a great job on it, and it does work. It melts into the sauce. Doesn't it? So I think you you're like ready. that word caramelized? Caramelization. <laughs> I think you're ready. Go ahead and add the rice. Okay. So you can either use short grain rice or long grain rice. It's just on your preference. Oh, yeah. Okay? Yep. So now we're going to toss that in the oil, coat it in the oil, get a little toast on it. When it starts to smell a little nutty, we're going to make these vegan style. I know okay. you grew up with, they added lamb. Yep. You grew up adding lamb, mm -hmm. but we know with dietary lifestyles now, yeah, I think I it's important it. that we, we, we sure. take care of those folks. Because yep. it's a big part of the dining community. That yep. is the, that is Greek oregano. Mm -hmm. And that stuff is fantastic. Put as much or as little as you like. Okay. okay? You know what's funny? My grandmother lived till 90. She ate meat. They ate everything the old timers. You right, know? So right. Something's wrong. Just like my Greek, uh, my big uh, Greek wedding. My fact, yeah. Yeah. We got Windex over here too, so we're ready. Just <laughs> So now case. we're going to deglaze. And I, again, I'm using vegetable stock for this. Okay. We're going to deglaze this. Not now, chicken, vegetable. Usually when you cook rice, it's two to one. So you have one part rice, two parts liquid. We're going to only, only add one part of the liquid and bring that to a boil and let that cook to al dente because then yep. we're going to cover the grape leaves in more of that vegetable stock. Yep. My God, you can smell that already. Oh, that Greek oregano is so fragrant. Absolutely. It really is different. When you buy you commercial, got this up all the way, I have it up all the way. When you buy commercial oregano, it just doesn't have that aromatic yeah. smell or flavor. I mean, Whether you it's smell that, we can't smell oh, that. Are you kidding me? It's fantastic. Yeah. Whether you buy Mexican, Greek, or Sicilian, is you're not ready favorite. for the lemon yet, are you? Go ahead, add the lemon. Yeah. We're you want to squeeze some lemon? Oh, you, those mitts, you, be, you should be able to crush that lemon. Yeah, well, I'm just trying to be gentle, you know. That's a kinder, gentler Greek, you know. Okay. So now Nick is adding all that beautiful ground lamb like and ground crunch. beef. Go to your butcher. I like to have it coarse ground. So ask him to grind it fresh versus fine ground because it gives you a little bit more texture when you're having that pasticcio. I don't know how you like to make it or your mom made it. So who made this? Yaya? Yeah, yeah. Yaya yeah. made this. And so when Yaya was making this, what were the men doing? Outside drinking ouzo, eating cheese, oh, yeah. tomatoes, olives, and doing the lamb on the spit. Yep. So doing the lamb on the spit. Now, yep. when you did the lamb on the spit, was that a process leading up to the that yeah. day? Well, absolutely. Like me and Kenny were talking about earlier with you guys, you know, back in the day, the lambs were their little pets for the spring, right? <laughs> And all the little kids grew up with the lambs and all that stuff, and all of a so sudden, so it was like a little petting zoo oh, at first. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, one day, sudden, hey, 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 where are you going? They're going like, well, where the hell is the lambs? I mean, where's the little baby lambs at? Oh, they, they got, they got away. They, they ran they, away. They, they run away. You know? So it's like my grandmother yeah. Zanos, same thing with rabbits. Yeah. yeah. So right. for rabbit catchatory. Right. Yeah. So they so <laughs> in the back, they're they're going around in circles. All right. And my so dad keep the celery stalk and put the Italian dress, and then we cut little pieces yeah. off and chew it. Was good. It was good. Go ahead and add the tomato paste. Add the ground tomatoes, and you know, one thing, either you like it or you don't with this dish, is the cinnamon. Mm -hmm. I prefer it because I like the sweet, savory component to it, and that has, that cinnamon has a little bit of savory. So instead of using ground cinnamon, we're going to use a fresh cinnamon stick, and the cinnamon is actually the bark of a tree, unless you, if you don't know that, and it's the bark of the ceylon tree. So really? like, yes, it is. So, I just thought you got it at one of the grocery stores. I didn't know all that. You, you can. <laughs> you absolutely can. So. Nikki's adding those tomatoes. We're going to season that with salt and pepper. Yours is getting ready to be yep, done. Yep. And we're going to come back after the break and we're going to assemble the grape leaves. We're going to teach you how to roll a grape leaf for the first time. You like love cigar, cigars. Like cigars. So you're going to love that. And my brother, you love making pasticcio. Yeah, so you're going to assemble the pasticcio. We're going to have a good time and we're going to go from there. The great thing is, as long as I was in the restaurant business, you taught me more about sharpened burger chocolate. I almost killed him a couple of times. I get the invoice. He put all this fancy sharpen? stuff. Oh, sharpen it's burger. a fancy chocolate. Uh, but anyway, he, he taught me a lot. All right. Oh, that's good. All right. yeah. Take your time with that. How long do you got to do all this, Mark? Well, like I said, you want to bring this up to al dente, and you only want to use one part of the broth that you're using. And if you're not a vegan, go ahead and use chicken stock, use lamb stock, use ground lamb okay. for it. Uh, you just want to cook that to al dente, and then it makes it easier to roll as well when we're rolling the grape leaves. And then when we add that broth on top of them, as you'll see in one of the next steps, it's going to soak in. All right, so let's keep these guys working. Let's keep them working. We'll flip around and look at this camera. Hey, guys. And then that'll be it. And then uh, we'll, we'll take our little break, and then we'll come back later on the Absolutely. show. Absolutely. Right Sound good? Sounds great. All right, more from Pesto's Test good. Kitchen oh, yeah. in just a little bit. Back to us. 
I have to say that was one of my all-time favorites, and we're only halfway done. Wait till we come back and we actually try the food in a little bit. Thanks to Mark and all the guys that made their way to the kitchen that day. All right, special treat. As we told you, we are at uh, Trumbull County Tourism today for our show, and uh, Beth Carmichael, who the executive, she's the executive director here, and we're keeping our distance. Not yes, wearing our we are. Right now, she just took hers off. I just took mine off, and uh, everything's going to be okay. Anyways, <laughs> first, tell me about Trumbull County Tourism. Tell me what you guys do. You've been on the job for how long? Three years. Three this years. May, I've been back in the area. I'm really excited about that. You went to what high school? I went to Harding. I graduated from Harding, yeah. and I graduated from Kent State University. And Beth has worked all around the country, but decided to come back here. That's right. Because why? Really, because this position was open at a time when my parents are getting older, mm -hmm. and. They're a little stubborn and don't want to leave the area, so right? yes. <laughs> so um, I had this opportunity and it's been, it's been really exciting and it's fun and I love doing what I do. Our, we've got a great team here at Trumbull County Tourism and we're all so passionate about, um, about Trumbull County and showing Trumbull County in the best possible light. And there are plenty of awesome things to do here, but what are people saying when they come to Trumbull County and they think, eh, it's got Warren, and I don't know much else about it. What do they say when they get to see all the different things we have to offer? Well, it's funny, I have friends from all over the United States and they, they keep on saying, I didn't know you had fishing and look at all those outdoor opportunities and I can bring my kids and do the parks or we can do kayaking in the summertime. <laughs> I want to talk about this because today is Easter Sunday and at my house we don't do, I'm not a big fan of ham, I'm just going to tell you right now I'm not. We do Italian food on Easter so I thought this would be a good connection. We're going to do wedding soup and have pasta and things like that. But this uh, Italian food trail idea, mm -hmm. tell me the genesis of it, who thought of it and how it kind of came about mm -hmm. and then some of, the, some of the great restaurants we can see on the trail. Great. Well, um, Tourism Ohio was doing the Year of the Trails in 2018 when I came into this position. Mm -hmm. And they had asked what trails we have here for them to promote. Mm -hmm. We do have the Mahoning River Water Trail and then we have the Greenway. But I said, we've got to do something different. We, you know, we've got wine trails and scotch trails and, you know, there's just what it really speaks to this area and the one thing when my brothers and i came to visit every year was which italian restaurants were we going to go to right where are we going because there's so many um regional specialties that you can get here that you can't get a lot of other places and you just mentioned like Italian wedding soup. You right. don't see that a lot of places it's outside true. of this area. It's true. Almost every restaurant has an Italian wedding soup. Mm -hmm. um, greens, greens with Hungarian hot peppers. That's right. Uh, so when we're, that's right, hot that. peppers and oil. Yeah, an hour west in Akron, they don't even have that. They so don't. It's, it's You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And we're um, a part of what the Italian food trail is doing is we're partnering with Mahoning Valley Scrappers this summer for the second annual hot peppers and oil tasting contest. Go on. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, people can come in early. We will have vendors such situated, and everybody can taste their and, and vote for their best. And we. We will also have um, judges as well. How many restaurants are on the trail? And over over 60. Get out of here. We call them food sites actually yeah. because it's not just restaurants. Okay. The majority of them are restaurants, but we have just Pizzelles in Cortland. Yes. You know, we've got wineries that are serving Italian varietals, like at Green Eagle Winery or maybe here at the Charbonnet's wine bar down right here. Down um, Jimmy's Italian Marketplace. I mean, come on. Yeah. So, um, and just their desserts alone are amazing. So we call them food sites here. Okay, and what's, when people see this idea, I'm sure it had to pop. I mean, I'm sure it had to be like, oh my gosh, this is the best. That's right, yeah. it, and, and a lot of people here locally are excited about it, and we continue to get national press for that, mm -hmm. but you know, we have to continue to push that message out there because people forget about it. Okay, if people have a business or if they want to come check you guys out and find out all the cool things they had to do, give them the uh, contact information, how to get a hold of you guys, and then if they want to come to the office, how they can do that because we want everyone to stay safe. Right, so first for the Italian food trail, you go to italianfoodtrail.com. Um, you can click on the button there, sign up to be on the mobile pass. This is the very first year we're doing a mobile pass. And so with all 60 in the past, we've charged just minimal charges. This year because of COVID and we understand the struggles that our um, food sites have had, 
We're not charging anybody for that. Okay. So people can go on, log in, download the uh, pass to their phone, and then they start checking in. And we're doing fun um, prizes along the way. So we call them pop-up perks. Okay. Um, the first one is finishing today. Um, which is if you sign up, you're registered to win two $50 gift certificates. And the next one um, I think starts in the next week or so and, and it'll be encouraging people, hey, go to five wineries on the path and um, check in and you'll be registered to win prizes. So we're having fun prizes throughout the promotion. Um, in order to register for the grand prize, you either have to get to 16 or 30 by the end of November. Okay. So for all, all that information, go to italianfoodtrail.com. Okay. And then for general information on Trumbull County, go to exploretrumbullcounty.com. And we've got videos there. You can see the list of uh, historic sites. We have a lot of information that people may just have forgotten about, but it's, it's a great way to just go and say, oh, this is where I want to go today. I need to get out of the house. I need to get out of whatever and breathe some fresh air. So go to exploretrumbullcounty.com and and you're good. And you're good. You're good to go. And if you want to come see Beth and her team in this building, call first, make an appointment so that they uh, know you're coming so they get their masks on and all that good stuff. Thanks for so much That's for right. being here. Thank you. And letting us the show here today. It's so Well, nice. thank you. I appreciate you guys coming in. All right. More of Alex Spotlight when we come back. Serving the Valley for over 28 years. Rachel's, the Four Course Feast is back. Enjoy an appetizer, house salad, entree, and dessert for just $19.95. Fine dining doesn't have to cost a fortune. Rachel's Restaurant in Austintown. Hey, welcome back to Valley Spotlight. If you're celebrating Easter today, happy Easter. We're in uh, downtown Warren at the Trumbull County Tourism Bureau and enjoying ourselves today. And uh, every once in a while, like I'll be driving to work and I'll have these theories. Like, I wonder if people aren't wearing shorts because their legs have a vein in them or something like that. It turned out I was right. Uh, so we went to a uh, vein expert, a doctor in Boardman, to find out a little more how to take care of those unsightly problems with your legs. Patients will come in and say, oh, I haven't worn shorts in 20 years or 30 years. And Well, if you're one of those folks and it's because of varicose veins, there's some good news for you. And Dr. Joseph Protein says it's much simpler and quicker than you think. A lot of patients are under the impression that there's nothing that can be done about the, the varicose veins or the leg swelling or, or uh, skin discoloration. And, and the procedures are easier than ever. They're, they're really, uh, you know, usually in and out in, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Before we tell you how they do it, I think it's important to understand what's going on in your body to get those unsightly bulging veins in the first place. There's a, a series of valves in the veins. They're one-way valves that allow the blood to go up towards the heart, but are supposed to prevent it from going back down. When those valves fail, for a variety of reasons, mostly just uh, genetics, you know, it happens to, to lots of people, um, the, uh, what's created is a venous hypertension. It's a high pressure inside the vein because the one-way valves are failing and the, and the blood is pooling in those veins. And that's what causes those veins to appear. And if it's not the veins that show up, you can still get swelling and discoloration too. When there's a venous hypertension, that could, uh, could cause a uh, bulging vein. It mm -hmm. could also cause a, a, a pressure all the way down to the capillary level. And if that's the case, you'll get more symptoms like swelling because the fluid leaks out of the capillaries. Uh, or you can even have blood cells leaking out of the capillaries, which then go into the skin and, uh, and, and basically die and leave behind their iron. That would cause the skin discoloration. What's so bad about that? Well, bad skin can be injured easily. You could get an ulcer, and those are hard to heal. It's rare to have any uh, life or limb threatening problems from, from veins, but, uh, but you know, some people have a progression that just takes a few months. Other people can go years with the same, uh, same appearance to the vein, but in most cases it will progress. But there's hope and treatment, starting with what you can do on your own. Uh, there's uh, conservative things you can do to treat, like compression stockings. Uh, walking is one of the best things you can do to, uh, to prevent and treat varicose veins. Uh, any kind of exercise is always, you know, always a good idea. And if that doesn't work, Dr. Protein says the treatments have advanced so much throughout the years. 
Right now, what we've been doing a lot of is called uh, microfoam sclerotherapy, and there's a product called Verathena that's uh, commercially available for uh, for that. Um, basically, we inject the vein with the foam. The foam uh, causes the vein to collapse and stick together, and it takes the vein out of circulation. And look at some of the results. This gentleman went from this to this in just one treatment. It's really astounding. So you're not trying to make the vein work better. You're trying to make the vein not work at all. Right. Is right. that right? Yeah, right. If, if we take that vein out of circulation, the blood is forced into the healthy veins. You have plenty of veins in your legs. In most cases, we can remove the, uh, the offending vein or collapse the offending vein without, uh, without any problems. You're in, you're out, and the recovery is easy. All they ask you to do afterwards is a little bit of walking and get the blood flowing. Most people are uh, really surprised at how quick and easy the, pr uh, the process is. Um, there's a, you know, some cases where we have to see the same patient a few times because we're limited on the dose of the sclerosis we can use. Uh, but yeah, we, we try to make people happy. We try to educate the patients as much as possible you know, and, and treat, you know, treat themselves in the future as far as preventive me measures and uh, conservative care. So don't be ashamed at those legs this year. Shorts are the doctor's orders for this summer. That gives you a nice appearance with uh, no surgery. We do it right here in the office and it's a really quick, easy procedure for everyone. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Jesse, for setting that thing up. We really appreciate it. If you'd like to go to their website, drprotain, P-O-P-R-O-T-A-I-N.com, or you can just give them a call at their toll-free number, 844 Four F O R legs L E G S. Get out and enjoy the summertime. Don't worry about those legs. They'll take care of you. All right. Now, one of the cool things about Valley Spotlight is we get to meet interesting people, people that are doing great things for the community. Carl Nunziato is one of those people. Lauren had a chance to sit down with him and just find out a little portion of the great things he's done. The courthouse is supposed to be a place that treats everyone with equality, but it wasn't always a place that was accessible to everyone. This level came in straight here. There were two big steps out here. You could see how this wall is. This wall was the level of the prior ramp. It was flat. So there was two major steps going up inside the door. Once you got inside the door, there were three more steps. It was impossible for a wheelchair to get in. A person with crutches would have trouble. But anybody with a wheelchair would have to be carried, the wheelchair would have to be carried into the courthouse. It was the late 1970s. Carl Nunziato, an experienced lawyer, needed to help a dear friend named Don Baker, but not as a legal counselor. He went to court that morning to help lift his friend's wheelchair up the steps since he was facing divorce after becoming a paraplegic. I saw a couple of my friends that I knew come by and I said, can you help us carry this wheelchair up the step? One guy just had back surgery, another guy had hip surgery. They said, we can't do it. Well, we're standing out there, the hearing was at 10 o'clock, it's about a quarter to 10, and there was a couple of ladies standing there. They said, we're gonna help you. So the two ladies started to lift the wheelchair. We got up three steps, I said, stop. You're gonna kill all of us. This is too heavy, we went back down. We sat at the bottom of the steps, never got into the courtroom. He never got his day in court. He never got to appear before the judge because we couldn't get into the building. What might seem like a few steps to most was a proverbial mountain, a mountain that needed to be moved. And so Carl and Don decided to move it themselves. Once we discovered this problem, we started the campaign to have this ramp built to have a wooden ramp initially built in the courthouse, and then when they did the major remodeling of the courthouse, they actually sunk the floor there. It was an era before the American with Disabilities Act became law, and Nunziato and a group of motivated Youngstown residents were about to set out on a 15-year journey to make the city accessible for everyone. They called themselves the Barrier Free Architecture Committee. One of their first projects was to make city streets easier to navigate with something called a curb cut. The year was 1982. 
Nobody knew what we were talking about because there didn't exist any. I said, well, it looks like a driveway, but it's even a little less than that. So they said, we have to build a prototype. Down on Federal, down on Front Street, where the mill was, they said, you could put one there. Don Baker and I paid for it. It was $280. We paid for the first curb cut, and that's where they put it as a prototype. As he walks this ramp today, each step is laced with success. Success for a generation of people who have followed him and who might have a story just like his. Major Carl Nunziata was one of the first Army soldiers to go to Vietnam. These photos were taken just hours before he lost both of his feet and part of a leg while he was under enemy fire. He spent two years learning to walk again at Walter Reed Hospital. When a person is severely wounded, the, con the concept is they need compensation to overcome their wounds. And they try to do climb mountains and go skating and go rollerboarding, go skiing. My compensation was I got an education and I came back and I applied that not only for my benefit, but for the benefit of the veterans. And they talk about freedom. Think about it. If a person can't get into his courthouse, can't get into his school, can't get into his church, there is no freedom. We made that part happen. And we Uh, what a great, great person. Thank you, Lauren, for that story. I mean, we could run that every single week. I'd be perfectly fine with it. And congratulations to Carl. They just named the, the uh, Veterans Administration, the VA hospital after him. That's awesome. Did you ever wonder, this is something I would wonder, and I'm kind of mad I didn't think of it in the first place, why they have popcorn and candy in the theater? Sean Posey did way before me. Here's this story. Today when you go to the movies, popcorn, candy, soft drinks, and other concessions are a central part of the experience. But when the world of moving pictures first enthralled the public, candy and even popcorn were not sold inside theaters. By the year 1907, 3,000 Nickelodeons were in operation in the United States. And in 1914, 27% of Americans visited theaters at least once a week. In the years before the Depression, theater owners universally disdained the idea of selling concessions. They feared that patrons would litter and damage the ornate furnishings of palatial movie palaces that opened during the teens and twenties. As the Great Depression eroded revenues in theaters across the country, owners began leasing space inside to popcorn vendors in order to attract patrons. Once theater owners realized the revenue generating potential from selling popcorn, they began offering it themselves. Renowned theater architect S. Charles Lee, famous for designing San Diego State Theater and the Huntridge Theater in Las Vegas, also invented a machine that popped and kept popcorn warm for patrons. Back in those days, a bag of popcorn cost anywhere from five to 10 cents. As theaters incorporated refrigeration or conditioned air, they found that it could prevent chocolate from changing color and keep water ice cold. Candy counters became a common design element in theaters. Everything from chocolate candies to candy apples were available. Sugar rationing during World War II curbed the sale of candy until the late 1940s. As the Cold War set in, Jujubees, Baby Ruths, Goobers, Milk Duds, and Snowcaps, smaller versions of a candy called the Bob White, predominated. Today, popular candies include Sour Patch Kids, Skittles, Swedish Fish, and Nestle's Bunch of Crunch, along with classics like M&M's, Milk Duds, and Dots. However, then is now, popcorn dominates concession sales even though prices have increased over 600% adjusted for inflation. Many patrons wonder why popcorn and other concessions are so expensive at the movies. During the first weeks of a film's release, studios take up to 70% of ticket sales. Revenue from concessions allow theaters to operate profitably. What is it? Say, what is it? Hey, why it's buttercup, popcorn and 
add sweet cream butter to hot popcorn. Mix it up, wrap it up, Buttercup is born. It's delicious. So nutritious. It's a taste delight. It's so munchy. Crisp and crunchy. You'll enjoy it by eating butter crunched Buttercup popcorn at its best. Served in a king size cup. Step back in time with me and revisit the golden age of entertainment. From turn of the century Nickelodeons to Keith Albee's Vaudeville Palace. From neighborhood theaters of yesteryear to your favorite drive-ins and twin cinemas. They're all featured in historic theaters of Youngstown and the Mahoning Valley. Available from the History Press. Thank you, Sean. Good job. All right, he has a, a book about theaters. It's called Historic Theaters of the Moaning Valley. If you'd like to check out that, you can. Also one called Lost Youngstown. You can get those books on Amazon.com. All right, we will take a break. When we come back, some really cool things that'll give you a jolt that they're doing at the Grand Resort. And it really all started with salt, with Himalayan sea salt. That's where it all started because of a patient who came in and told me about the benefits of salt therapy, which is inhaling uh, Himalayan sea salt, an aerosolized Himalayan sea salt. And I found that my patients were having fantastic results using salt therapy. And I wanted to know how could I incorporate the Himalayan sea salt into products that would benefit the sinuses and the skin. And that's where Salt Me was born. Here's an example of something new and cool for the community here at the Grand Resort in Warren Howland area. The Charge Point charging stations to charge electric cars. There are two of these, one here and one behind me. And this is the general manager of the resort, Kelly Denman. Thank Hello. you for meeting with me. Of course. How cool is this? We are so excited. Yeah, when did these get in? We installed everything last week, so we're ready to roll. Come on down. Yeah, and this, do you have to be an Avalon member to use these things or a hotel guest to use these things? Absolutely not. You can be just part of the community or a hotel guest or a member. Yeah. How easy is it to use? I'm it, sure if you have an electric car, you kind of know how, right? For sure. But it's super simple. All you have to do is download the ChargePoint app mm -hmm. and that gives you access to all of the units. You pull in, plug it into your little device over here. Mm -hmm. And if you're waiting in line, let's say there's four people who mm -hmm. are actually charging, it'll tell you when your car is ready to go and it's your turn. That was gonna be my next question. Do you have to make a reservation or appointment to come and charge your car? You don't. As long as all four ports are open, it's free reign. And then you can just wait in line and check in on the app and it'll let you know when it's ready to go. While I'm charging, let's say it, take, it takes a couple of hours, can I go inside and use all the fun stuff you guys have here? Oh, you sure can. Yeah, give me an example of some of the things we can do. Oh, the options are endless. We could have cocktails, yeah. you could have appetizers, uh -huh. you could even have a 60 minute relaxing massage. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Right? Yeah. Or if you pack your swimsuit in your car, you can take a dip in the Rowan bath. Is also. that true? You sure can. That's awesome. I know there's a new coffee bar with lattes and things like that too. Yes. If you do this in the morning or the afternoon, you need a little pick me up, you can do that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this. So when you're done charging, you come back out and you're done. Are there certain hours of the day where you can do it or is this 24 seven? It's a 24 hour um, availability for the charging stations. Oh, that's awesome. So if you're on Route 80 or if you're just stopping through, come in. Check us there out. aren't that many around here, are there? There are not. Um, there's a couple, you know, in Hermitage and then also at the Coates Car Care down the road. Oh, very good, very good. Anything else cool going on at the Grand Resort coming up? I know you guys are always evolving and doing things. We are, so we're really looking forward to the summer season with the mm -hmm. patios opening soon and our outdoor resort pool. Um, also, there's tons of space still left available for the bridal showers and baby showers or if there's any you know graduations coming up in the next couple months too don't forget about us yeah and booking those events what's neat about it is they have so much room outside if you're still a little bit worried about the COVID thing and you want to get outside and do those things you guys have a lot of space to do it we sure do all right give them the phone number here at the Graham Resort in case people have questions of course you can reach us at 330-856-1900 there you go or go to the website www.thegrandresort 
chargingresort.com. Come and check out these charging stations. If you have an electric car, you may already know, but download that Charge Point app and they'll take care of you. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. Thank you, Kelly. If you'd like to see all the cool things they're doing, thegrandresort.com. Just sit around and watch the videos. It's a lot of fun. All right, back to Greek Easter we go, back to Pesto's Test Kitchen, and it was a buzz on this Sunday. Take a look. Back here in Pesto's Test Kitchen with our guys. This is Nick from Buena Vista. This is Ken from Sunrise Inn. They're our resident mm -hmm. Greek people. Yeah, and we have our team back here from oh, Bistro. Bistro Bistro team here. Here. And we're rolling grape leaves. And, and it's a community thing. Yeah, but because first you have to teach them about the grape leaves. We do, right? we okay. do. Like, when you, like you said, and you said, your grandmothers used to always have the grape leaves, oh, God. and they would My grow them and pick them, some. and then they would blanch them in boiling salted water. My mom has your own grapevine in the backyard. Yeah, yeah. I got to do that one day. I'll yeah. get to that. I'll get there. Sure, sure. Yeah. We just bought the house a couple years real ago. Good at that. But if you don't have that option, you can buy a great. Uh, go on to your favorite Greek retailer, or go on to one of the online shopping places. Get some. They're going to be in a brine. So with that brine, yeah, that's a great brand. The Orlando brand right is great. Mm -hmm. But you want to rinse them really, really well because Big it's got time. like citric acid on it, and it'll be a little bit too lemon. Mm -hmm. in flavor and it's got some other chemicals on it to preserve the integrity of the leaf but you want to destem them mm -hmm. okay so once we destem we have our rice we have our grape leaves rolled out and it's like rolling a cigar guys right mm -hmm. so you so want to take anything it? else you're going to roll uh, yeah, for exactly, yeah exactly exactly <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're going to take I'm the talking about leaves. different kind of cigars yeah, or cigarettes. exactly right, exactly right. exactly so we're going to take we're going to fold over the edges of the grape leaves <laughs> and it, it's, it's going to be just like rolling a mini burrito in my case mini uh -huh. burrito from our back in our days where at uh, chi -Chi's. Back in our days. Is that how we did it back then? Yeah, uh, there's a, di a couple different ways of yeah. Chi Chi's. Chi Chi's, I used to do it like this uh -huh. pinch over, pull from the middle, and just tightly roll. Okay. And so you can roll them as big or as small as you want, depending. You know, it depends on how big your fingers are. Mr. Mm -hmm. Hyderis? Yeah, this is your first time doing it, right? <laughs> just so you know, you see this blue brace, it's a Greek mati. It wards off all the evil spirits. Nice. Oh, nice. seriously. I like seeing so it by you. While yeah. we're filling, now, the big thing is, too, you want to take your, your heavy bottom pan that you're going to be baking this, and you want to line the bottom with grape leaves. So we're going to come over here to Nico. Nico's working on the pasty. The meat sauce mm -hmm. came out great, brother. Thanks, sir. It came out great. So what do you do now? Well, we just take, take our pasta. We put it right in here, then we incorporate the meat sauce into our pasta with a little Romano cheese and the and March sauce. We mix this up good. Now, like you put a little bit on the bottom first Absolutely. and then some on the top? Absolutely. Okay, great. So just like we do, with the, as far as your grape leaves go, we want to put some on the bottom so we don't scorch it up. Now, one thing. Now, we did bechamel for an Italian lasagna a couple weeks ago. This is the same bechamel, but when it comes off the stove, we add whole eggs into it. And we whisk those eggs in. We temper the eggs in because it's going to create more of a thick custard on top of that pasticcio. And you, Nick, you said this was at your restaurant every once in a while. Right? Yes. Oh, do you? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to come over. We'll come on over. Come. Call me. Yeah, that's great. When do you do that? Yeah, whenever we get up. So get do, you, do you make like moussaka as well? Moussa, you moussaka make... and Ooh. pasticcio mostly. Which moussaka is what? That, that would be eggplant. Now, you're talking about Italian lasagna and Greek lasagna. That's wow. more of a traditional thing where the Italians have the meat and all that stuff. This is a sliced, very sliced, very thinly sliced potato, eggplant. In your meat like this, uh -huh. in your layer, it's like it's a potato and it's outstanding. It's outstanding. It's outstanding. It's outstanding. It's outstanding. It really is. Really is. Right. You brown your potatoes first. Mm -hmm. You put them on the grill and brown a little olive oil. Now, salt. obviously, now do you ever do souvlaki? Do you ever do kaftetes? Ooh, well, here and there, souvlaki a little bit. You know, obviously we have the gyros and stuff like that at the restaurant. Cool. So, cool. yeah. Well, my mother makes a kaftetes. She puts they call in Greek they call yosma, but like the mint and boy, that which is wow. a lot. I roll this one okay. terribly. That's, that's fine. You put it in there. Good to roll. Go ahead and put that in there. You sure you're not Greek? I think he's part Greek, folks. <laughs> now, Trayvon, once you're done layering those in, we're going to put, again, we're making for a vegan friendly crowd. We're going to put the vegetable stock over the top. And then, Kenny, like you said, and a lot of Greek families do, put a little tomato, whether it's fresh diced tomato, yep. a little bit of tomato concasse, yep. or some crushed tomato, put yep. that on top as well. We're going to cover that. We're going to bake it in the oven for at 350 to 375 degrees for about 35 to 40 minutes, along with this great pastis. Nikki, you're killing this pastis over here, man. I love all the layers and layers that we're building. My mother, just so you know, when she bakes it, she puts a plate on top. I don't know why. She puts the leaves on and top. There's a of reason it. for everything. Yeah. There's a reason an old for everything. Tradition. Mm -hmm. Now, I could eat it just like this. Oh, absolutely. That's now it's ready to go, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, not quite ready well, because we got a couple the more egg, steps. I mean, it could be. It could be. We're going to put more meat sauce on top, that mm. beautiful Greek meat sauce with that cinnamon and Greek oregano. And then he's going to cover it in the bechamel. 
and that is going to create that custardy top. So you have all those different textures, layers of flavors. You have the richness from the meat sauce, and you get to the creaminess of the bechamel. It's going to be fantastic. And We're going to cover and wrap that as well. And always remember, take your if, you, if you're using whole cinnamon sticks, make sure you take them out before you make your make your pie. Which yeah, we did. Up. We yes, did. Right? When my yeah. sister got married, my mom and everybody rolled four thousand of these for wow. the appetizers. It wow. was incredible. Can you imagine what they wrote at the Greek festivals? Oh, oh I, I don't. They, and they're really they're great. The food at the Greek festivals. Really really I guess they were all gone by the time. Oh the yeah. Was yeah. Who wants the other stuff? <laughs> Again, you know? right, so. These two things late night, if you've had a couple of cocktails or a couple glasses of wine, uh -huh. are your best late night stacks you'll ever have. Oh. Like a cold piece of lasagna or a cold piece of pasticcio. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, Nick, you're doing good with that, cuz. Because, <laughs> you know. All right, you keep going. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll cut some slices. We already have some made. Yeah. We'll eat it. We'll enjoy and, and test things out. You guys good for that? Yes. You good? Right. You good? We'll see oh, you guys. I can't wait for the grape leaves. All right. They're vegetarian <laughs> grape leaves. Commercial time. We'll be back. <laughs> Hi, I'm Barbara Corcoran. I'm constantly asked by news sources how to best navigate today's real estate market. I call the brightest agents in the business to get their input. Hi Kelly, what's going on in the Mahoney Valley area? Hi Barbara, the market in the Mahoney Valley has remained strong. I'm so happy to hear that. Sellers are enjoying the safety of the Guaranteed Sold program and buyers and sellers love the 3D tour and the free moving truck. Get the best advice from my friend Kelly Warren. Go to kellysoldit.com. Be safe and smart. Beauty Best Cafe, home of Uncle Nick's Greek Fried Chicken. Sunrise Inn, home of award-winning pizza. Weston, Maine. Come check out our poutine. Mocha House Cafe and Eatery. The famous California cheesecake. Charbonnet's Wine on the River, famous for our great wine and our charcuterie. Jack Steakhouse, famous for our cowboy ribeye. Modern Methods, famous for our craft beer. Cheers to Downtown Warren. Shop Hills in the Liberty, Lincoln Dolls, and Borgman Plaza, Youngstown, and the Ridgeview Plaza and Warren, and the Hills location in Champion, all open 10 till 10 daily. No hot water? Call A to Z Dependable Services. Our fully stocked rapid response water heater specialist will get you back in hot water in no time. A to Z is the only call you need to make. All right, we are back at our big fat Greek Easter. Wow, <laughs> things are looking good, and we're not talking about us because we no, got no. slim and. Trim. This is just part. You're of half Greek, Greek, right? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> How about you, Draymond? Half Draymond in Greek. Yeah. <laughs> so get them up to speed. Them, if people are just tuning in. Well, we just got the pasticcio out of the oven. We cut it. We cut it a little bit too early. I recommend you let it sit for about 30 minutes, oh, so it can well. sit up. It's fell apart a little bit, but well, we're, hungry. we're hungry. hungry. We're hungry. So Nikos, please. The grape leaves. The, the grape, grape leaf leaves. reveal. The grape leaf reveal. Look, Look at, at these. Look at oh, 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 those are, oh, those are much that. nicer rolled than what we did, boy. Yeah. Jeez. And then, Ours look like a Chinese fire drill. For talk about this a little bit. Talk Which about is. your... Uh, Sesame bread over there? My mother bakes New Year's bread and Easter bread. She bakes a coin in the bread. So when you cut it, and I don't know where that coin's going to be, but say you cut a slice and you toast it. It's, it's like a sweet bread. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where the coin is, but when you get it, it's good luck. You got a toaster here? In all this uh, big yeah. kitchen, you got a toaster? <laughs> we have a toaster. And them fancy ones. It's my knee. It's my knee. It's my knee. And, 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 and on... <laughs> Easter, but well, then they also put the egg in there too. Oh, we put the what? egg and then we crack the eggs. Yeah, I forgot Anyone. about that. Yeah. I got some grape leaves. Oh, for you, yeah. Buddy. There you go. Yeah, now, these are it. also scorching hot, so yeah. they uh, shouldn't be this hot when you eat them, but I don't care. So we have a contest. Good. Remember, Nick, you get the egg and everybody cracks them. Whoever yeah. has uh, the one that's not cracked wins. My cousin Dino one year made a chalk egg, and of course he won because nothing <laughs> would break. You know, yeah, he was nuts. Is that good luck for him or bad luck for cheating? Oh, who knows? <laughs> he was a character. He's a character. So what do, what do we say in Greek when we're getting ready to eat? Yeah. Uh, prayer, just a quick prayer. Yasu Opa. Okay. On Christmas, on Easter Day, you'd say, Christos Onesti. Christ, that means Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, you, then you answer back. He's also nasty. At least also nasty. And then you salute, and everybody starts eating. Who did the cooking in your place? My my mother. When you were little. Uh, my grandmother. Yeah. My yaya. My yaya. Always? Always. Like did the whole thing? Did Easter, you lay yes. in the kitchen at all? Like, Easter, yes. Absolutely. How about for you guys? Well, my dad cooked the lamb outside right, on the yeah. spit, and my mother made these kind of things. So. Yeah. How about you, Marcus? Uh, my Greek aunt and, yeah. and yaya. My and aunt she Sandy. Did it. She did everything. Everything. Well, her, I mean, just the whole family pitched in. 
you know, and uh, it was just an amazing experience, you know, between the lamb, the pasticcio, the galatamburico, you know, spanicopita, tiropita, souvlakia, all those great dishes that I still hold deep in my heart, and I'm Absolutely. Italian. And I mean, this is why you see no skinny Greek people, folks. There ain't no skinny, guy. I don't know skinny Greek, do you? No. Nope. Except Dave over here. Yeah, yeah. He's skinny, man. Do you think eventually we'll lose some of this? Do you think eventually the, the yayas will go and we'll lose some of this? Well, uh, I yeah, unfortunately, yeah, but we're like in our family, we're trying to pass some of these on yeah. because if not, you know, we lose it. Yeah, we lose it. But it's a shame, you know? All right, so the what do you think, Mike Case? I'm pretty good. Pretty, pretty good? good? I'm going to try the grape leaf next. Try the grape leaf. Yeah. I'm going to try the grape leaf. It's like leaves. a thousand degrees. Uh, yeah, but that's okay. Well, that's okay. If we Should spit this out on camera, folks, don't get offended. <laughs> are you supposed to use your fork? Oh. No, but they're hot. <laughs> they are hot. What do you think? Great leaves are delicious. delicious. Yeah. Oh, man. They need a touch of lemon. Oh. Even vegan. Oh, Kendall, what do you think? That's great. It's great. I wouldn't normally, I like the lamb in there, you know. But that's really good. Salt, pepper. I like the lemon. Yeah. The Greeks, like, we eat it with yogurt on it, believe yeah. it. Yeah. Plain yogurt. And the Greek yogurt, Faya, means eat. F-A-G-E means eat. So. Yeah, and that's why they have that brand. Yeah, oh, it's, it's really brilliant. Yeah, thank you. Brilliant. Let's get it in. That was a All good right. segment, you guys. That's that was awesome. Yeah. Here's to my friends. Thank what you so much. What do we eat next week? What do we got next week here? We'll be back. Salad. Salads. Are oh, salads. Yeah. I like salads. Cheers, actually. everybody. Have a happy Easter to you and your family. Absolutely. Yasu. Yasu. They got me. I didn't think I would like grape leaves, kind of because of the texture. I had about 49 of them, so I'll just be honest with you. All right, let's take a little break. When we come back, Kelly Warren on the other side. Uh, in these times, you need a home office, it seems like, and she has some tips after this. Papa Canzanetta's Peppers, recipe established in 1975. A family secret is now yours to share with the people who add spice to your life. Choose from mild and hot versions, plus our famous original blend too. They're the perfect punch for any dish. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, we've got the recipes to prove it. Just follow us on Facebook, order online at papacans.com and pick your peck. Papacans.com, order six jars or more and qualify for free shipping. We like it hot, we're glad you do too. We are back on Valley Spotlight in downtown Warren today at the uh, Trumbull County Tourism and uh, talking a little more about home offices. Seems like you're not allowed to go to work anymore and a lot of people are doing it. So you want to have a cool home office. So Kelly Warren and I found a couple of them and showed you this one in particular. It's today's home advantage. Pardon me, I was just getting a little bit of work done here as we get ready for another edition of Home Advantage with my friend Kelly Warren. I, I, that's a joke, because I never really do that much. I may be the <laughs> laziest person you know. And I'm sure you know a couple lazy people, right? I, I know a few. Do you have any that live in your house? I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> but this, I mean, if I had an office like this, oh, and by the way, there's another office right there. We'll talk about that in a second. If I had an office like this, I'd come up here and try to do something on right. the computer, I would think. Isn't this cool with yes. the windows and everything? Yes. And, and you've got a lake view. I mean, it's, it's really a beautiful space to get your work done. Let's start with the ceiling because when you first walk up the steps you, you're kind of looking up as you walk and that's the first thing you notice. Right. Yeah. Statement piece. It's got the natural hardwoods. Yeah. It's really cool. I don't yeah. think, have you ever seen anything like it? I, I've seen some in different houses. Yeah. Yeah. It's really This neat. one really stands out though. And then this one like you know how it goes you have one office and everything kind of gets cluttered up and it, there's another one next to it which is I think a great idea if you have a family and they want to work on the computer or your wife and a husband both work and they both need their separate spaces. You know, in today's world where you've got kids doing school from home, mm -hmm. you can have, you know, a, a workspace and a school space. Or if you've got a married couple who are working from home and doing a, a distance type job, you've both got your own offices. So it, it seems like there's a lot of that right now with people. Yeah. A lot of the corporate offices are just shut down and people are kind of working yeah. from their house. Which I think is great for our area because people can move into the area, you know, travel to the office once a month or something, but really live anywhere they want to live. Mm -hmm. And with our cost of living, great schools, things like that, it's really a plus for the Mahoning Valley. And the Youngstown area is much cheaper than Cleveland and Akron and Pittsburgh, I yes. would think, right? Right. Of yeah. course, much more affordable and, and certainly a great place to live. What about what about offices when people come in? Do they see them and think office or do they think, oh, that's a cool area. I could put some chairs there. We can watch TV or how does it work? It, it can be it, really any space in a house can be whatever you want it to be. So if you want a man cave or a movie room or a bar or whatever, it can be any of those things. 
if you're working from home and you're teaching kids and you want it to be an office, it certainly is that too. Yeah, and this place has a, has a really cool setup too. Uh, normally we don't promote the houses as much, but I wanted it one more time to tell people if they want to look at pictures of this, uh, there are some really unique uh, nuances that you wouldn't normally see in a house. No, right? and it's just too much for us to tell you about in three minutes. I know, I know, <laughs> but if there's one, give me one thing that you like. Just, in it, not even maybe as a realtor, but something when you walked in and you were just like, Oh man, that is cool. I wish I would have thought of it. If I yeah. ever build a house, I'm doing that. I think to just soak it all in, just the awe of walking in and seeing the staircase and seeing the ceiling and, and to have each separate space and yet have everything wide open. I, yeah. I love the floor plan. And you know, it's, it, it's so quiet here. The family is mm -hmm. in the family room, right? Yes. And we can't hear the TV going and all that stuff. And they're probably using their phones and things like right. that too. Really cool place. All right, if people want to see it, give them the website if they want to look at the pictures. Online at kellysoldit.com. Okay, and then if you want to give them a call, even if it's during the holidays or in January, they're ready to go. We're working, 330-717-2689. The month of January into February, normally people aren't thinking about going out and looking at houses, but should they? Historically, it is slower, but this year we're not anticipating any kind of slowdown. The market's good, interest rates are good, the buyers are buying. Yeah, and one last question before we go. If you're nervous about COVID and you just kind of want to do it virtually or you want to stay a spaced away, do you make an appointment or how does that work? We do FaceTime walkthroughs, we can do Zoom conferences, we can show you the 3D walkthrough tours, mm -hmm. so you don't have to enter the home until you're truly serious about it, and we can wear masks and social distance and everything else. There you go, kellysolda.com, and that is another edition of one of my favorite segments, it's called Home Advantage. <laughs> All right, thank you, Kelly, very much. Uh, we appreciate all your help, and I hope you watched and enjoyed today's program. Again, Trumbull County Tourism, really cool things going on. I can name off a couple. Uh, first of all, Mosquito Lake, second largest inland lake in the state. It's phenomenal. The bass fishing is fantastic. You could rent a boat if you like. If you want to go to the Italian Food Trail, you can do that, italianfoodtrail.com. Sign up, get going, and start filling your belly with some great things. ExploreTrumbullCounty.com is a great place to go if you're just sitting around doing nothing and you want to see really cool things to do here in Trumbull County. And then don't forget, the Scrappers have a full season now and it's a draft league. We're going to get some studs to play baseball. So get out there and check out Eastwood Field. Uh, the weather is going to turn just right for summertime and the boys of summer are back. Hope you enjoyed Valley Spotlight. You can watch it on valleyspotlight.com. We have a Roku channel too. Our Facebook page is fantastic. We have little clips on there and Instagram. Hope you enjoyed today's show and have a great time everybody on your Easter Sunday. And if you're celebrating Easter on another time, I hope you enjoy that too. All right, time for your retro commercial. The Cadbury, and two things I don't like about Easter, black jelly beans and the Cadbury egg. Oh, I should add peeps in there too. That makes three, but the commercials are awesome. Have a good day. See you next week. Something more cuddly. Yeah. Bigger. <laughs> Friendlier, maybe. Thank you. Not quite what we had in mind, yes. Everyone wants to be the Cadbury Bunny. Because only he brings Cadbury cream eggs with their delicious milk chocolate outside and creamy filling. While others may keep trying, there's only one Cadbury Bunny, and no bunny knows Easter better than him. If you like this video, subscribe to Valley Spotlight on YouTube, and be sure to click on the notifications bell so you know when we've got some new stuff. You also can like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and subscribe to us on Vimeo or our Roku channel.